This is After Hours with Amy Lawrence. We are asking for your votes for the After Hours Hall of Flame on our show Twitter at After Hours CBS. Very easy. I just retweeted it as well. Josh Norman, Ray Lewis, Will Muschamp, or the introduction of the Vegas Golden Knights, your Vegas Golden Knights. We'll also put up a spot on Facebook, or we did, excuse me. Producer Tom did put up a spot on Facebook where you can weigh in there as well. So we will induct one of those worthy candidates before the end of the show. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence on CBS Sports Radio. Been talking about this for the last 90 minutes or so. Really excited for you to hear Mike Turnoff, the general manager of the Cleveland Indians, who came so close to snapping a long drought and winning a World Series for the first time since 1948. Had a chance to catch up with him on Thursday afternoon. And before we talked about the World Series against the Cubs, which of course they lost in extra innings in Game 7, I started with the big news in Major League Baseball, which is a five-year labor deal that will keep the peace in the sport. And when I first got on the phone with Mike, I asked him his reaction to the new labor deal. You know, I think uh, the... the the best part of it is just the certainty uh, moving forward. I think it, it's a great thing for the game that we continue to have labor peace. It's a huge credit to Major League Baseball and to the union for being able to reach that. Uh, and overall, I think a real positive for the industry. An interesting piece of the new labor deal could be that the All-Star game will no longer determine home field advantage for the World Series, if it's true. Has not yet been confirmed by Major League Baseball. That was the piece that kind of broke from the AP in the middle of the night last night. So, Mike, if it is true, if that's accurate, what's your response to that change? Um, you know, I the details of the entire agreement aren't out yet, so I don't want to get too specific on things. I do think... With changes like that, I mean, a lot of that, I think players felt like maybe it wasn't um, the ideal place to be deciding home field advantage. Look, for us this year, the home field advantage ended up not being a huge factor, uh, and we ended up losing on our home field. So I don't think it's a huge change, I think, in some ways to have the uh, the better record of the league champions um, define home field advantage is fine in a lot of ways and not really all that different. Do the All-Star festivities, the game, the home run derby, the, the the experience itself still mean something to the players? Absolutely. I think it's a huge honor for players um, to be a part of it. The ones that I've seen that go, it's a huge honor to those guys. So they take it seriously. Um, these guys are naturally competitive people. I mean, I've talked to Tito about it before, too. Uh, he's an incredibly competitive person. So any game, like we, we walk into the clubhouse and our guys are playing ping pong and they're like diving, trying to make plays and, you know, win in ping pong or video games or whatever it is they're doing. So I think in a lot of ways, um, the players are always going to be competitive no matter what they're doing. And in an environment where they're around their peers, uh, they're in public and on TV in front of that type of audience, they're always going to try to do their best. Well, that's good to hear because I know some fans fear that the All-Star game will no longer matter to players if there's nothing riding on it, and so the quality of play might not be as good. Mike Turnoff is the general manager of the Cleveland Indians who went to the World Series. What an amazing battle against the Cubs roughly a month ago. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence on CBS Sports Radio. Mike, now that the dust has settled and it's been a few weeks, what will you remember most about this World Series? Well, look, it was painful at the end um, to get so close and, and especially to be up 3-1 in the series. Um, and then even in the last game to have come back and tied it and go into extra innings and not be able to win, that's, that's painful and it's hard to get over that. Um, as time has passed and you start to reflect on it more and hear from our fan base and talk with our players, I think there is a lot um, for people in the organization and for our fans to be proud of. One of the best things that we saw was how our team kind of came together. Um, there were these selfless acts, Andrew Miller coming in in the fifth inning of games to do whatever it took to try to win. There were incredible moments of overcoming adversity. We had two of our top starters, Carlos Carrasco and Danny Salazar, essentially not be able to pitch throughout the postseason. Um, and guys, you know, just took it instead of seeing those setbacks as things we couldn't get over and harping on the past, our guys took it on as an opportunity. So Kluber pitched every three days or every four days, basically. And Josh Tomlin uh, stepped up uh, when he needed to. And Ryan Merritt came in and won the LCS for us. These kind of 
incredible sort of heroic stories of um, lesser named guys coming in uh, and putting the team on their back. So I think in a lot of ways there were there was a lot that we can kind of reflect on um, and feel really positive about, even while you know we're still sort of in in that moment of uh, painful reflection and and hoping to build on it and, and get that one extra game for next year. Well, you're in Cleveland, so you certainly understand the sports climate in that city. And the Cavs championship notwithstanding, the fans were all in about maybe seeing the Indians snap what was a really long drought for a World Series title. So what was it like to be inside the stadium during the World Series, especially leading up to that Game 7? The atmosphere was incredible. Um I've never seen a moment like when Rajay Davis hit that home run in the eighth inning to tie the game. You know, there was all this controversy because there were a lot of Cubs fans in our ballpark. Um, and obviously they were into the game. You know, they, they, with 108 years of legacy that they had of not winning, they were willing to pay anything to get into our ballpark. So in, in the moments when the Cubs took a lead or had something good happen, you heard the cheers on their side. But I've never heard a louder environment um, or a more supportive fan base than when we tied the game in the eighth inning. Um, and so I think, you know, we, we saw the city rally behind us. The Cavs players kept coming out to a lot of our games, which really rallied the city in a lot of ways. I think it built on the optimism of the Cavs win and Cleveland finally having a championship. It built on some of the positivity that surrounded us having a national convention here a few weeks after that. And, you know, to see us go that deep and, and see the city finally have some optimism was a really neat thing. You mentioned Tito. He, he's a baseball fixture. There are so many places where he is so beloved. Uh, I'm a big fan. One reason why I was so happy to see the Indians get to the World Series. What has he meant to your ball club, Mike? Tito has been, um, he, he's really, he's changed our culture in so many ways. When he first got here, he talked a lot about just breaking down barriers um, between players and, and himself and coaches and between coaching staff and front office and just throughout the entire organization. He brings people together. As a leader, he is incredible at bringing people together. So he's done that for our organization. Um, he's a tremendous game manager. He prepares like nobody I've ever seen. Uh, and he, but more importantly, he gets the most out of his players. Guys want to play for him. And I think, you know, we talked about guys overcoming adversity and guys stepping up to opportunities, even at times when you wouldn't expect them to. I think a lot of that is because of the culture that Tito developed within the clubhouse uh, and the environment that people felt like they could take risks. They felt like they could, they had the whole team behind them. So um, in so many ways, Tito is a huge part of, and primarily responsible for the entire environment within our clubhouse uh, and the culture within our organization. We're spending a few minutes with Indians general manager Mike Chernoff in advance of the winter meetings after the Indians come so close to a World Series title falling in a Game 7 to the Chicago Cubs. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence here on CBS Sports Radio. I think one of my favorite things about the Indians' run to the World Series is that outside of maybe Corey Kluber, a couple of other guys, they're not household names. It's a lot of worker bees, so to speak, and, and role players and just guys that the rest of the country didn't know until the World Series. We got to see Francisco Lindor on this stage, and it was awesome. What's his ceiling? He is uh, hes one of the most fun players to watch. Um, that smile is infectious when, you know, it's just the – the grin, the way he plays the game, he's always having fun. I think it was we, – we get to watch him every day. So ever since he came up, we've seen the type of player that he can be, just a dynamic player on all sides, whether it's on the bases, in the field, at bat, whatever it is. Um, but I think in a lot of ways, being on the national stage within the World Series uh, was kind of a coming out party in some ways for him, um, where the entire – nation and the baseball universe got to see just how good he is and with just how much energy he plays the game. So what are your priorities now for the winter meetings and this off season? Well, we lost Mike Napoli to free agency and we lost Rajay Davis to free agency. When you look at our club, um, those are still two holes that we have to fill. So we have, we bring back almost our, our entire ball club. Um, and, and we get some of those guys back that were hurt. We, we get some of those guys back. Michael Brantley would be a huge addition. 
um, Carlos Carrasco, Danny Salazar, who are mostly just out for the postseason, um, will be coming back and healthy. So I think we're looking to try to fill those holes. Um, and I think because of the majority of our guys that we're bringing back, we have some flexibility in how we do that. Um, but we're definitely trying to find ways to either bring those guys back or fill the holes in some ways that they've left. Well, last thing, Mike, before I let you go, it's really difficult to get to the playoffs, much less a World Series, and go all the way to a Game 7. You guys come so close. Still now, just a couple of months away from starting all over again. So as much as you can tell with the guys, with Terry Francona, what's the prevailing attitude around your team after having been denied in such painful fashion? Oh, motivation to get there again. Once you get a taste of it, you, you want it you want it back. And the conversations that we've had with players, with Tito especially, I mean, we just we want to get back there. We want to have a do over um, and try to try to get that one last win. So you know, we there are look, it's draining to go through the process, and you need a few weeks to kind of decompress afterwards. Um, but there are like the the Royal what the Royals did. They got to Game Seven in what year was that? 2014, I guess, or 2013, and then won it in 2014. I think there are plenty of stories where you see a team that gets a taste of it, gets the experience of going through it, and maybe knows how to handle it a little bit better the next time. Um, and the sort of inevitability that you want to get back there uh, and try to find a way to close it out. So that by far is the overwhelming sentiment with the team right now. Well, if it's anything like the ride the Indians gave us in 2016, you can sign me up. Mike Turnoff is the general manager of the Indians, headed to Nashville for the winter meetings. Looking forward to building up that team for the upcoming season. It's great to get you a couple of minutes. Thanks so much. Of course. Thanks for having me.